Hi, I'm Guy from Scoop. Network redundancy is important for most businesses, and sometimes having a backup line is not enough to keep the network connected, as it may be hardware itself that fails. So how do you maintain connectivity during a router hardware failure? The answer is Virtual Router Redundancy Protocol, VRRP. This protocol allows you to have two routers configured with similar settings, in which case the secondary router can take over when the primary router fails. This change is automatic and doesn't require any physical intervention. To picture it, you have the two routers cabled to the same network switch. The VRRP interface is the virtual link between the routers and the switch, and is recognized as the gateway to the LAN network. All clients' traffic is connected to the virtual interface without them knowing that multiple routers exist. Traffic is redirected to the specific router based on the priority of the VRRP interfaces on the Microtech routers. When an issue arises with a primary router or router with the highest VRRP priority, traffic is redirected to the router with the next highest priority and the secondary router will take over. It will function like this until the primary connection is restored. Now that we have an idea of what this setup will look like, let's take a look at how to configure this on a Microtech router. For our demo, we'll be using two L009 rack mount routers with the latest Winbox version, which at this time is 4.0. Ensure that both routers are on the same router OS and firmware versions to maximize compatibility. You could use any combination of Microtech routers to make use of VRRP. Assuming your router is out of the box, the Ether1 interface will be the WAN, and all other interfaces are put into a bridge. We need to navigate to Interfaces, click on New, and add a VRRP interface. We'll leave the name of the interface as VRRP1. Under the VRRP section, set the interface as the LAN interface of the network. In this case, it is the bridge. Set the VRID to a unique number. In this demo, I'll set it to 25. This VRID is used to specify which redundancy set the routers or interfaces will be a part of. Next to set is the priority. The router with the highest priority will be seen as the main or owner router and will be the first choice as the breakout. This router should be set to a higher priority than the others. In this case, we'll leave it set to 100. Now we need to assign an IP to the VRRP interface. Navigate to IP, Addresses, and add one. The address must be the IP that all client devices look for as a gateway IP. In our example, this will be 192.168.88.1 forward slash 24 and the interface must be the VRP1 interface that we just created. Change the IP address of the bridge interface to an IP within the same subnet of the VRP1 IP. We will set this to 192.168.88.10 forward slash 24. That is all we need for router 1. The configuration on the second router is the same as that of the first, but with some minor but important changes. Navigate to Interfaces, then add a new VRRP interface. On the General tab, name it VRRP2. Moving to the VRRP tab, set the interface as the LAN interface, in this case it's the bridge. Set the VRID to the same as that of router 1, which is 25. Set the priority to something lower than the priority of router 1, or we'll set it to 90. If there are any subsequent routers, we'll configure them with a lower priority. This allows us to know what the sequence will be in the event of router failures. Now we assign an IP to this VRRP2 and have it mirror router 1, 192.168.88.1 forward slash 24. The bridge or LAN interface now needs to have an IP that is the same subnet, but different to the bridge on router 1. We will set this to 192.168.88.20 forward slash 24. To test the configuration, we connected both L009 routers to our network to get a WAN IP. We then connected to a switch via the Ether8 ports of both routers. You'll notice that the VRRP interface flag will change to R on router 1, which stands for running. On router 2, the VRRP interface will have a flag of backup 
but might not show the flag in the list of interfaces. You can test the setup by unplugging the cable from router 1 to the switch. You'll see the flag of the VRP interface on router 2 change to R. This means it's now running as the master, since router 1 is seen as down or unreachable. Reconnecting router 1 will revert router 2 into a backup state, and router 1 will take over traffic again. Just keep in mind that this is similar to, but not the same as WAN failover. If the WAN connection on router 1 fails, the VRP is not going to help redirect traffic over router 2 to restore internet connection. If you're interested in WAN failover configurations, find the link to our blog and video in the description. On a side note, for the most seamless experience, ensure that both routers are configured identically, bar the VRP settings and bridge IP. All other rules and queues should be copied. You now have router redundancy in case of hardware failure. Shoot us with any questions you have in the comments, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Guy from Scoop.